Well, what we do is to try to understand to what extent does um, corporate governance affect um, the performance of banks during the financial crisis. So we uh, look at that sample of American banks and uh, we came up with a measure of corporate governance that is based on company loss and the variation in state loss across different states in the United States. And we came up with a somewhat surprising finding that exactly those banks uh, in which shareholders were more empowered in the sense that they, um, the company laws allowed them more, you know, the right to interfere with managers more often were exactly those banks that did not perform as well during the crisis, which in the end led to a larger number of these banks uh, being bailed out by the U.S. government. And what can we learn from that? What can we do about it? Should we change governance policy? Well, I think one of the key policy implications of our paper is that if we want to start uh, regulating the governance of banks, we have to adopt a more sophisticated uh, perspective rather than a naive view in which empowering shareholders is the right thing to do, right? So there has been uh, some proposals, some policy proposals claiming that one of the reasons why banks were in trouble during the financial crisis was because shareholders didn't really take their responsibility seriously. Now, our paper challenges that view. Uh, our paper suggests that, especially in the case of banks, because they're implicit and explicit, explicit state guarantees, you don't really want uh, shareholders to have full control over managers and over the, over the board, because that may lead to excessive risk taking, right? So I guess the policy implications are really if we want to understand, if we want to regulate corporate governance, we have to understand the special uh, situation in which banks and, and other financial firms are in, exactly because of the role of the government in um, in regulating these companies. I'm not completely aware of the situation in the United States, but uh, there has been a kind of liberalization in uh, for banks uh, during the 90s in, uh, in Europe probably also in the U.S. Um, has that gone too far? Well, that's difficult to say. Um, what we do know is that in the years leading to the financial crisis, uh, the amount of direct regulation on banks has been very soft. And although there were some major governance reforms that happened around 2002 and 2003, in the United States uh, associated with uh, Sarbanes Oxley Act. And that was, and there were many um, follow ups in different countries as well. Although there were those um, uh, uh, new regulations which apply to all companies, not only to uh, financial service companies, in practice, most of the activities of banks were kept pretty much uh, at arm's length, uh, both in the United States and also in the United Kingdom, and there was perhaps some competition between different regions trying to attract more companies and etc. Of course, nowadays, uh, the trend is in the other direction. So there could be, perhaps um, deregulation was excessive, but it's probably easier for us to say this with the benefit of hindsight.